welcome to DC Conversations. Um, so as an expert in uh, oncogenomics, can you share some insights on the rising incidences of blood cancer, especially among in, young people you know, in India? So, you know, India is not having a very concrete number on rising incidences of leukemias because it's quite uh, uh, diverse uh, in India. Uh, however, definitely uh, leukemia incidences, blood cancer incidences is increasing and the amount of bone marrow transplants that 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 is being done in the country is on the rise alarmingly. And if you look at the factors, what could be the reason? Uh, age is the major factor. Uh, leukemias or, you know, blood cancers, they they develop after 40 years of age. I, even in young, you know, it is becoming much, much more uh, prevalent nowadays. Uh, the major risk factor could be the pollution, air pollution. There are certain uh, vehicle exhausters or, you know, factory uh, uh, outputs where uh, benzene or P2M.5 type of gases are there, which can actually increase the risk of development of uh, blood cancer. Uh, among lifestyle factors, definitely diet, nutrition, healthy lifestyle, that also plays uh, plays an important role. And there, there could be some genetic predispositions also to, you know, uh, blood cancers in young adults, which could be uh, leaf Remani syndrome, TP53 mutation in, uh, prevalent in the family, or it could be Down syndrome. Uh, individuals also are predisposed to, uh, you know, leukemias. And liquid biopsies have revolutionized uh, cancer diagnosis. How effective are NGS-based tests in detecting blood cancer? The next generation sequencing definitely is a game changer because uh, we can have multiple uh, genes tested in a single test. And there are multiple, uh, you know, genomic biomarkers which can define different types of blood cancer. We have two lineages of blood cancer, majorly myeloid lineage and a lymphoid lineage. And we can have multiple hematological malignancies like AML, uh, CML, uh, JMML in myeloid lineage and CLL, that is chronic lymphocytic leukemia or ALL, usually in young uh, children and uh, could be lymphomas in lymphoid lineages. So next generation sequencing can detect genomic biomarkers, which can define these particular lineages and thus a particular type of treatment can be given. Uh, not only treatment, the disease prognostication can be done. Also, mm -hmm. when the transplant is, is being planned, it is very important to you know check the donor's uh, uh, compatibility that is also done through um, molecular tests, which involves a part of next generation sequencing. And also, um, once uh, we have to even completely match the genomic profile of the donor. So if a cancer predisposing gene is present in a patient and same mm -hmm. gene is being carried by the donor, then there is there is a high chance that transplant will fail. So we have to confirm whether donor is carrying the same genetic predisposition or not. So that way also next generation sequencing helps uh, to mm -hmm. understand, you know, to highlight more on this. Uh, like if it is an acute myeloid leukemia case, next generation sequencing can help us to identify certain mutations. For example, FLT3, FLT3 is a gene. If it is mutated, a particular targeted therapy can be uh, administered. Similarly, there are molecular tests for CML, which was game changer a decade uh, ago when, uh, you know, BCR ABL genomic biomarker was identified and imatinib tyrosine kinase inhibitor could be given to CML patients, uh, which actually revolutionized uh, CML treatment. So these are a few examples, you know, where next generation sequencing can help to identify genomic biomarkers and thus targeted treatment can be uh, given to these patients or at least a prognostication on the disease can be. There, there are multiple applications. Even, uh, you know, after the treatment is given, we can do uh, next generation sequencing to determine whether there is any minimal residual disease, which we call it as MRD, to understand whether the disease is going to relapse, to anticipate the relapse or recurrence. So that will give doctors an idea, you know, that whether the disease is going to come back and a timely decision on the treatment or timely change of treatment can be uh, administered to those patients. Considering there are advancements to actually uh, uh, check early detect, I mean early detection for early detection, and also like you said, timely detection is very important. So, but what challenges uh, persist in terms of accessibility, affordability, and quality of care? 
accessibility is a major challenge because only Taiwan cities may have such kind of facilities. Not all hospitals can have tertiary uh, uh, care centers and uh, the treatments and accessibility to these uh, advanced tests like genomic tests is limited to certain areas of the country. Uh, in terms of affordability, of course, the treatments and the uh, tests are really uh, expensive for a common man being India as an out-of-pocket uh, uh, expenses for healthcare. So uh, it is a challenge. However, with the decreasing costs of next generation sequencing test, the accessibility mm -hmm. is improving day by day. And of course, uh, about the quality, not all the centers uh, may have uh, uh, same quality criteria for the test or the treatment. And therefore, you know, patient may find it difficult to, uh, to choose the center or, you know, to decide like which centers to avail the treatment for. So what kind of lifestyle modifications and preventive measures can, uh, you know, young people take to prevent blood cancer? So, you know, air pollution, as we know, is very much prevalent, especially in cities like Delhi, Mumbai, metropolitan cities, the air pollution is on rise and air pollution is a major factor, uh, exposure to toxic substances, to toxic gases. So use of masks and, you know, staying indoors, um, I mean, different measures to avoid air pollution, that is one way, use of air purifiers. Another way is diet and lifestyle, healthy lifestyle, uh, avoid the use of tobacco, and uh, um, other toxic substances. So these are the major lifestyle changes. Plus, you know, understand your risk, understand the uh, the familial risk or any genetic uh, predisposition going on in the family. So high risk individuals should be tested more uh, in terms of like genetic testing availability or uh, you know pre pre test genetic counselings can be uh, given to such individuals so that uh, they can be you know identified early and uh, the treatment can be managed better so what kind of research initiatives or collaborations have been taken up uh, to tackle blood cancer in india yeah there are multiple organizations like icmr uh, those have you know uh, some running programs to screen the individuals at an early age uh, who can develop leukemias and uh, not much but uh, one revolutionary technique car t therapy is also developed by India now, which is a targeted therapy that can be used for uh, ALL, leukemia patients, uh, very effective treatment. So such kind mm -hmm. of initiatives are being taken and there are multiple small groups which are working in this direction. And how can we leverage technology and genomics to improve technique uh, treatment outcomes? So, uh, you know, genomics is, is an advancing field. We are on a learning curve and we are on an advancing curve as of now. Uh, mm. It has hit the India in a big way and it is available to Indians in a low cost effective manner and Medgenome is one company uh, who has brought uh, genomics to the healthcare in India uh, at a very low cost um, uh, and quality oriented um, solution uh, we have provided. So uh, definitely, you know, use of advanced technologies, use of AI, use of liquid biopsy, use of uh, MRD detection techniques. Uh, plus, you know, um, uh, I mean, creating the databases, Indian specific databases or, you know, region specific databases. So all these things will definitely help us to leverage the uh, leukemia uh, treatment in the country. Could you also elaborate on uh, the differences in blood cancer prevalence and among different age groups and regions yeah, so within India? Yeah, I mean, prevalence can be divided into two age groups, younger age group and an older age group. In young age group, if you see then uh, acute lymphoid leukemias, they are most prevalent. Um, and also along with JMML, which is juvenile mono, which is actually, you know, it is a, uh, it is a Noonan syndrome predisposition kind of leukemia where uh, it, it is kind of a ge genetic predisposition causes this kind of leukemias. And uh, there are children who can have some non-Hodgkin lymphomas as well. So most prevalent in the younger age group is uh, uh, acute lymphoid leukemias, ALL groups. And in older groups, you will see the uh, more uh, prevalence of AML, acute myeloid leukemia, mostly above 60 years of age, and also of plasma cytoma or myeloma that we call. So these two uh, type of diseases or leukemia diseases, they are more prevalent in older age groups. Yeah. Okay. Could you share a case study where early detection actually helped them uh, 
you know, in an effective treatment. There are many, but uh, I would like to cite probably two of them. So hmm. uh, one would be, uh, you know, it's a case of a young male with uh, acute myeloid leukemia and uh, he was being treated um, uh, but there was a complete remission was not obtained and then he got a transplant but he relapsed and uh, i mean after speaking to doctor he was for exactly 265 days in the hospital he was mm. being treated uh, so extensively however it was not the response was not being achieved and after transplant also he relapsed then the genetic testing was done which is called as comprehensive myeloid lymphoid leukemia panel which actually detects uh, the genes could be responsible uh, for aml and could guide some treatment so he was found uh, with a rare translocation which is new 98 nst1 translocation and with this information doctor actually treated him with a combination therapy which was a little bit more aggressive and mm. to our surprise I mean he is in complete remission from last three years so that's how the genetic testing helps and uh, I mean when I was talking to the clinician he was like that he was actually on bed number one for three, 265 days so mm. so it's a game changer right you know the genetic testing has helped him to achieve uh, the uh, the favorable response and he's in complete remission means which means that he's on follow-up but not having the disease as of now another case you know which where the genetic testing helps and gives information is about um, when we when we are dealing with young children and we are doing a lot of bone marrow transplants like especially in ALL cases so there could be certain like I mentioned about Noonan syndrome or CBL syndrome so there could be some genetic mutations which are present by birth so they can be de novo or they are running in the family we don't know but uh, they can be present in the siblings also or in the donor also so it is very important to screen uh, the patient that whether it is a germline variant or not, if we have identified something means whether it is present from birth or not. And the same genetic variation has to be screened in the donor as well. Otherwise, mm -hmm. the transplant will, will have no meaning. So yeah. that is very important to screen whether the mutations are present by birth and whether donor is carrying those mutations or not. So a case like this where again TP53 mutation was identified. Uh, the donor was screened and he was not having TP53 mutation. So transplant was planned and transplant was successful. And I think after six months, the complete remission was obtained. However, TP53 can be present from birth and can be germline uh, mutations. Is there any statistics on uh, blood cancer incidence among the young Indians? Not actually, uh, we may have, but in leukemias, if you see about the prevalence Probably, uh, uh, you know, young um, in young individuals, majorly leukemias, acute lymphoid leukemias are present. They are having a, a, a more presentation among all leukemias. But I have noted down some statistics just from ICMR and National Cancer Registry Program. There is some insights into the epidemiology of cancers in India. And from Delhi Cancer Registry, they indicated that approximately 8 to 10 percent of uh, leukemia cancers in young adults were ALL and AML. And ALL being the most predominant type, as I mentioned earlier also. And in, uh, in Mumbai and Delhi, they show the highest reported cases of blood cancer incidents, which could be related to the air pollution that I mentioned yeah. earlier. Yeah. And in terms of incidence, again, leukemia contributes about 30 to 40 percent of childhood cancers, among which, again, acute lymphoid leukemia is the highest subtype. And in Bangalore specifically, there was one study which showed that ALL comprised of about 60 to 70 percent of cases and AML about 15 to 20 percent of cases. So acute lymphoid leukemia is, is the most common type of uh, blood cancer in young adults. And there was very interesting thing that I wanted to uh, share, you know, uh, in some studies, they have shown the regional differences of types of blood cancer uh, in different parts of India. So if we talk about South India, majorly myeloproliferative neoplasms, which is like uh, polycythemia, where are high hemoglobins or essential thrombocytopenia, these kind of cancers are prevalent. If you talk about Northeastern India, then their lymphomas are present. So in Nagaland, Mizoram and Meghalaya, there is a high burden of Hodgkin lymphoma that is present. And if you talk about northern states, 
So Northern states, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which is ALL, that is most present in young adults. So this is kind of a regional differences that we absor uh, observe uh, across the country. Is there a particular reason for this difference uh, in different regions? A good point to be, you know, uh, yeah. just think about and uh, maybe probe yes, for. Definitely. Much, yeah. Good. yeah. Yeah. Maybe it is, uh, it can account for a genetic predisposition because um, the um, cancers like myeloproliferative neoplasm, they can happen due to JAK2V617 specific mutation, which could be more prevalent in some uh, region and consanguinity uh, can lead to, you know, development of that particular cancer in that region more. And air pollution in northern uh, uh, I mean, in Delhi region or in NCR region could be one reason for a specific ALL uh, kind of, you know, cancer. So could be some reasons, uh, not very sure about it. Yeah. What's the success rate like uh, for, uh, you know, uh, for those who, who detected early uh, and then started treatment in blood cancer? If the targeted therapy is, you know, identified, if the targeted biomarker, specific genomic biomarker is identified for a particular type of cancer, then the response is very good. For example, if CML, uh, most of the CML, they are having a BCR-ABL uh, fusion, which is chromosome 922 translocation in a uh, in different terms. So if that is identified, then uh, uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, they work very well. However, mm. relapse is noted after four, after a few years, but then some other um, uh, different combinations or different type of tyrosine kinase inhibitors are uh, available in second line or third line when the relapse is observed. And there are, you know, affordable genetic tests available for such uh, biomarker testing. Similarly, in AML cases, if FLT3 mutation is present, then a specific uh, FLT3 inhibitor can be administered. So if there is a biomarker-driven therapy which is being used, then definitely the response is good. And some cancers, they require profuse blood transfusions or, I mean, if we are not able to, you know, establish a genetic etiology or a specific diagnosis, then the treatment becomes really challenging. However, if a genetic etiology is established and there is a diagnostic clear, uh, clear, uh, clarity, then the treatment is uh, is okay. I mean, it is useful. In case of a relapse also, uh, the treatment is as aggressive as when it was first detected. Depending on the stage, depending on other factors, depending on the presentation of the disease, depending on if genomic tests have been done, genomic, uh, depending on the genomic profile of the disease. But considering the effect of, you know, these treatments on the body uh, during the first time, uh, you think the body can actually uh, withstand uh, the treatment uh, in the second incidence? Uh, <laughs> so, you know, uh, 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 this reminds me of something that, you know, the benefit of the therapy is uh, actually uh, more considered than the effect side effect of the therapy yeah. because there is no other option. So that is how right. it is to be taken in some patients the toxicity can be more in some patients the toxicity can be less so yes. obviously i mean the recommended doses as per the guidelines is first of all standardized doses are given and yeah. if it is really toxic then the doses are reduced so it is up to the clinicians like depending on the patient to patient some uh, changes in the protocols can be done thank you doctor thank you so much for spending time and talking to us it was such an insightful discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.